Hi and welcome to this paper 3 overview. I'm just going to deal with the crime and deviance um, questions today. I'm going to do a, a separate one for theory and methods. Uh, I'm the sociology guy. You can follow me on Twitter at, at the sociology guy or Instagram the sociology guy or you can go to my website the sociology guy.com where there's lots of free revision resources, mind maps, knowledge organizers, exam tips, checklists, model answers and that type of thing. Just a quick disclaimer before I start, um, I have no prior knowledge of the A-level exams, I'm not involved in the writing of those exams, I have no knowledge of what is on um, the exams in June 2019. Um, any questions that I create in any of my videos are created by me. Um, I create the items as well, they are not based on materials from AQA, they are similar to AQA's materials but they have not been created by AQA. Uh, they are based on question types that have not appeared on specimen papers or on the AS and A level exams up until June 2019. Um, and the way I set my essays out is just one way of answering the question, other approaches may still get you full marks. Uh, and I don't make predictions. Please don't take what I say in here as, as being cast iron that is going to be on the exam. Uh, all I look at is I look at the type of questions that you may not have covered in your mock exams, in your homework. If you have been doing revision from past, past papers, you may not have seen some of these question types before. So this is what I do is I look at question types that haven't come up before and I try to make sure that you're prepared to answer those. So let's look at the specification content for crime. Uh, four spec points. Um, the first one, crime, deviant, social order and social control, uh, which is nice and non-specific, but essentially this is a uh, functionalist views of crime, so cultural views, Marxist, neo-Marxist, uh, realist, left realist, right realist, um, and labeling theory um, and interactionism on crime. The second spec point is the social distribution of crime and deviance by ethnicity, gender and social class, including recent patterns and trends in crime. So this is um, uh, why is it that working class are overrepresented in, in crime stats? Uh, why are middle class underrepresented in crime stats? You can also sometimes see they talk about victimization in here as well. So why are the working class most likely to be victims of crime? Um, gender and social class, uh, sorry, gender and crime, you could also talk about with um, sort of things like, sort of why is males more likely to commit crime than females? Why is female criminality increasing? Why are males um, more likely to be victims? Why are females perceived to be more likely to be victims? So why do we have this idea that women are more likely to be victims than males? You could get that in there. It links into the spec point at the bottom, spec point four, where it says victims. Um, and ethnicity, um, why do we see the different trends in ethnic groups? Um, we've seen a couple of questions of this in the past where we talk about ethnicity, uh, criminalization, offending and victimization. So a little bit more of a holistic view um, on things like ethnicity. So why is it that um, um, African Caribbeans are more likely to be stopped and searched than other groups? Um, why is it that sort of like, for example, Indian and Chinese are underrepresented? Nice and nice synoptic links you can make there to the education module. The next one, uh, the next spec point is the one that sort of kind of worries people a little bit. Uh, globalization and crime in contemporary society. And um, when we talk about globalization and crime in contemporary society, what we're talking about is the process of globalization has led to new and different types of crime happening. Um, not that globalization in itself is a crime, but it's led to a growth of other different types of crime. So it's led to an increase in corporate crime with transnational company, uh, with transnational corporations committing crimes overseas. It's led to increasing green crime, environmental crimes that have happened um, because we've because of globalization, where we are moving around a lot more, and it's led to lots more things like air pollution, water pollution, species extinction, desertification. Um, and other, and other environmental issues. Um, human rights and state crimes. Uh, are we more aware of state crimes now than we were before? Why is it that in contemporary society we're seeing increased amounts of state crime? Um, is it because of an increase in, in, in the role of the media, which is another spec point on there and was 2018's question. And so the media and crime looks at so like the ways in which the media not only reports crime through things like moral panics um, and news values, but also the way in which media can create crime. So things like imitation, desensitization and arousal. Um, in there as well, so like you may also have cybercrime. Um, cybercrime seems to be up 
up in there although it's not specifically mentioned in the specification points cybercrime can be one explanation for um, changes in the different types of crime because of globalization because as a result of globalization we've um, increased communications technology which means you're more likely now to be the victim of crime from somebody on the other side of the world than you are from somebody you meet on the street you can also put in that organized crime as well because in the post global uh, in the post post globalization era so um, after the fall of the Cold War, you get the rise of um, particularly Eastern European mafias and organized crime. Um, so anybody who's seen any of the stuff by Misha Glenny will know that sort of like the rise of these Eastern European mafias has started to increase things like human trafficking, arms trafficking, drugs trafficking. And the last spec point, which I, I think sort of like students worry a little bit or don't worry enough about, which is crime control, surveillance, prevention and punishment. Uh, victims and the role of the criminal justice system and other agencies this is something i think is under revised generally there's a 30 mark question at the first time um, we came up how do we prevent crime and um, how do we punish crime how do we control the levels of crime there's lots of different theories that are thrown in there essentially really you know, kind of left realism right realism a little bit of functionalism a bit of postmodernism with foucault and surveillance um, and the role of uh, the criminal justice system and other agencies I think it's worth having a look at those because they could potentially come up with smaller questions. You know, how do the police act? How should the police act? Um, how should um, they be represented? It has been a bit of a hot topic lately, um, policing in the UK, particularly on the back of um, what's been going on, so like with the moral panic about knife crime in London and cuts to policing. I think it's worth having a look over your notes. Don't go into too much depth. I don't think it'd be a 30 marker. But certainly looking at the role of policing um, could be something that's worth looking at. So the key debates in crime and deviance. Um, first of all, is crime a working class phenomenon? You know, we tend to focus uh, purely sort of like on working class crime through the media. Um, but why do we not focus on white collar crime? Why do we not focus on corporate crime? Uh, why are ethnic minority groups tend to be overrepresented in the statistics or certain ethnic minority groups tend to be overrepresented in statistics? And uh, we're seeing this with the moral panic again of the knife crime. And uh, we can go back to the 1970s and the myth of black criminality and the black mugger. Um, this could be another potential question that comes up. Uh, what has been the impact of globalization on crime? We've just talked through that. What role does the media have in crime? And uh, we mentioned that as well, sort of things like arousal, desensitization, news values. Um, moral panics and folk devils um, and marginalizing different groups in society um, you know this idea of divide and conquer um, what have the theoretical approaches contributed to our understanding of crime what is Marxism functionalism um, I would say realist theories could be a big 30 marker on that and um, uh, interactionism labeling theory who are the victims of crime? So this idea of victimology, looking at things like positivist victimology, etc. Um, why do males commit more crimes than females? That gendered crime. Do males commit more crimes than females? Are males more likely to be overrepresented in the stats? Are women represented differently in crime stats? Um, you know, the idea of the chivalry thesis or this idea of double deviance where women are put on trial almost for going against femininity as well as going against norms and values of society. How do we prevent crime? So some crime prevention ideas in there. And what is the role of the legal system and punishment? So that's some of the key debates. Let's have a look at sort of like some of the questions. And uh, there's been really there's been five papers so far. Um, specification uh, specimen paper one, specimen paper two, June 17, June 18, uh, which you may or may not have heard. Um, uh, the paper was replaced at the last minute um, because somebody leaked the paper. Um, and June 18 are. So if you go in and look at um, your past papers, it will say uh, 7192-3R. It's a replacement paper. It's replaced at the very last minute because um, the paper was leaked online a few days before the exam. And what happens if, if papers do get leaked online before the exam um, is they get replaced. There's usually always a replacement paper there ready. So, you know, if you see things online, um, you know, don't always believe, don't always believe sort of like that, that that person's got the paper. The likelihood is AQA will have picked it up and put a replacement paper out anyway. So let's look at some of the questions. Four questions on here, outline two, outline three, apply and analyze from an item. But don't forget, you've got to use the item and the evaluate 30 marker. So outline two ways on, on specification one, spec, specification paper one. Um, outline 
two ways in which the law may uh, perform an ideological function for capitalism. Okay, quite straightforward, you know, punishing those sort of could go against the norms and values of capitalism. Um, it can be sort of like through protecting the property, uh, protecting the ownership of private property, protecting the, the you know, law creation. And uh, so Marxists would sort of like suggest that the ruling class make laws in their own, in their own interests. Um, you know, things like copyright law, property, um, you know, laws against um, trespass, um, laws against cyber trespass, um, laws against people stealing. Outline three uh, reasons why some groups are more likely than others to be victims of crime. Okay. That question is quite, uh, quite straightforward. So you can think about things like poverty, you can think about things like their norms and values, you can think about where they live, and um, you could um, talk about um, sort of like the fact that they are, are suffering from relative deprivation. Apply and analyze two reasons why globalization may lead to an increase in crime. I think in that one, the item mentioned things like increased travel. And um, so that obviously leads to things like arms trafficking, people trafficking, stuff like that. I think there was also maybe a hint at a rise of organized crime and also increased telecommunications and internet. So it, it hinted at cyber crime as well. And then evaluate sociological explanations of ethnic differences in offending and criminalization. Okay, so not only the idea that sort of like ethnic minorities maybe or certain ethnic minorities may be more likely to be um, offending, but also the way they're more likely to be perceived as criminals in society. So that kind of heavily hinted at things like moral panics. Um, specimen paper two, outline two ways in which the media give a distorted view of crime. This can be through news values or moral panics. Outline three reasons why females may be less likely than males to commit crimes. You could talk about control theory, sex role theory, uh, lack of opportunities. Apply and analyze two reasons why uh, situational crime prevention strategies may not be effective in reducing crime. From what I can remember there, it was about uh, CCTV and it was also about burglar alarms and the idea would be well okay if there's you know 20 houses in the street and 15 of them have got burglar alarms it's the five that don't have burglar alarms that are more likely what we call displacement um likewise with cctv people may just commit uh, crimes in other areas evaluate the usefulness of functionist approaches in understanding crime and deviance okay that would be a really nice question to get i think you know, if you've got something like that, usefulness of functionist approaches and understanding crime and deviance, don't forget. Um, subcultural theories do tend to come under functionalism. So with that question, you're looking at maybe what Durkheim has suggested. Uh, you know, the idea of boundary maintenance. Boundary maintenance still exists in our society. Every time there's a terrorist attack, that as an example of boundary maintenance. Adaptation and change. You know, some people will be very highly debatable about whether adaptation and change still happens when there is a deviant subculture well sorry when there is a deviant behavior that changes society yes we've seen it in things like um civil rights uh, civil rights movement uh, feminist movement and uh, stonewall movement um anti-apartheid protest that's a good example of adaptation and change but do we still see it in society now I mean, we, we could argue that sort of like a lot of the pressure for a second uh, referendum on Brexit is actually heeding nothing from the political elite at the moment. And what they are suggesting is that, you know, you know, it doesn't change anything in society. Um, of course, then also you've got Merton and strain theory and you've got some of the subcultural theories that you could put in there as well, particularly Albert Cohen, status frustration, um, Claude Nolan, opportunity subcultures, uh, Walter Miller, um, you can also throw in, I would say, in with that one, maybe Hershey um, and Bonds of Attachment. Okay, June 2017 this is the first real exam. Um, oh, and two reasons for ethnic differences in criminal conviction rates. Lots of different things. Um, you can see there, criminal conviction rates would kind of hint at the processes. So you could talk about institutional racism and more likely to be processed. You could talk about canteen culture, selective law enforcement. Outline three functions that crime and deviance may perform. Um, the idea of functions, it's really looking at functionalism there. Um, uh, so again, boundary maintenance, adaptation and change, uh, crime acting as a safety valve. You could talk about some of the ideological functions it performs for capitalism. Uh, apply and analyze two ways in which deviant subcultures may respond to the difficulties of achieving mainstream goals. The hints in that item were very much a Claude Nolan and um, Cohen and status frustration. Uh, evaluate sociological contributions to understand the crime prevention and control. So a couple of things that you need to throw in there automatically is kind of left realism versus right realism. And also you can put in things like um, about uh, Foucault and surveillance society. 
Uh, outline two problems of defining state crime. That was last year. State crime, well, you know, the state makes the law. How do we, you know, suggest that, you know, if, it's, if a state makes a law, um, then, you know, that becomes legal. So therefore, some of the crimes that the state commits can be seen um, not as really as, as, as criminal, but almost as human rights violations. Um, outline three reasons why more males than females are convicted of crimes, chivalry thesis, um, you know, women sort of like see, being seen as, uh, as uh, in a way as being sort of like quite naive and misled. Um, apply and analyze two reasons why white collar crimes often do not result in uh, successful criminal prosecution. So things like lack of evidence, uh, difficulty in prosecuting, um, you know, the ways in which um, particularly white collar crime um, is not often reported um, because the company doesn't necessarily want the bad publicity. And then evaluate the usefulness of labeling theory and understanding crime and deviance. Nice one, sort of like, you know, labeling theory, primary, secondary deviance. Um, you're talking about deviancy amplification, moral panics. That paper never went out. Um, I think a lot of people um, were quite relieved when they saw the questions on it because it was a pretty difficult question there. White collar crimes, labeling theory, uh, defining state crime. It's quite a difficult paper. I would say that, you know, there's a very strong likelihood that they could pop up again in the next couple of years because I think that they are some quite tough questions. And um, if they've not actually been asked, um, you know, it's very, very likely that they will bring them up again. The replacement paper in, the, in, in, in actually um, looked at um, a lot easier questions, I think. So uh, ways in which gender may influence the risk of being a victim of crime. So you could talk about males and males behavior sort of tends to be more risk taking. And um, so therefore they're more likely to be a victim of crime. Males tend to be in areas where cr criminal behavior happens. Males tend to be more likely to be in gangs. So that could be what they, there could be a few reasons there. Criticism of the labeling theory of crime and deviance. Um, you know, so like it's incredibly deterministic. People live against the labels, um, self-negating prophecy. Apply and analyze two reasons for social class differences in official crime statistics. Okay, quite a nice one. I can't remember specifically what was in the item, uh, but you look at things like relative deprivation in there, um, feeling of strain, um, more likely selective law enforcement, more likely to be focused on, on working class areas than middle class areas. And then the evaluate question, sociological contributions to our understanding of the relationship between crime and media, um, which was a very nice question. I think I've done an, a, an essay on that last year um, to prep students uh, for that one. Uh, and obviously it came up on the, re on, on the replacement paper, which was, which was quite nice for those who'd watched that video. Um, so let's look at what hasn't been asked then. Um, most notably as a 30 marker, social class and crime and gender and crime haven't been up there. Um, they are ones I think sort of like you need to know a standard really um, you, because as you can see sort of like through the, the, the shorter questions you need to know four or five reasons um, why there are differences in social class and crime. Uh, I would say one of those reasons has to be things like white collar crime and corporate crime. Um, and with gender and crime you need to look also at victimization as well because I think that idea of, of um, male, uh, male and female crime and males being more likely to be the victims of crime but females are more likely to be perceived as the victims of crime um, is one that you need to look at. Marxism and crime. Now, I've done a video on Marxism and crime. And the reason I've done that is because I think Marxism and crime is a pretty tough um, question for students to come across. Because not only are you talking about Marxism, but you're also talking about neo-Marxism. And from my experience of teaching, um, one of the theories that gets a lot more students confused is fully social theory. Um, the idea that you need to take into account these six different components um, before you assess whether or not somebody's been criminal. Realism and crime, kind of been on the 30 marker before, but I think an actual um, question on realism and crime, so it'd be uh, evaluate the contribution of realist theories to our understanding of crime and deviance, that could be one that is up there. And globalization and crime, which is another video I've done. Um, you know, I don't mean to scare people about globalization and crime, um, but things like state crime, green crime, cyber crime, they, I think, are more likely as a 30 marker to be asked as part of the idea of globalization has changed the type of crime we have. Some of the smaller questions, things that haven't come up um, on the small questions, cyber crime. 
so it might be worth having a look at a couple of ideas on cybercrime although it's not explicitly on the spec um it is one of these things that's like is is part of the globalization um it falls underneath the globalization green crime um there's been nothing on green crime so far um do i honestly see there being a 30 mark question on green crime i really 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 hope not um, I think green crime is more likely to come up as a smaller question, maybe outline two ways in which green crime can be seen as transgressive, in other words, crossing borders, uh, something like that. The role of courts and police, I think there's not too much been on that so far. I think maybe a smaller question on ways in which the police um, operate and organised crime, which again is part of globalised crime. Um, globalization and crime but I think it might be worth just having a quick look at your notes uh, Hobbs and Dunningham and things like that um, for organized crime okay and um, thank you for watching best of luck with your exams tomorrow um, and thank you very much